Good morning, everybody. This is Ryan Carpenter with No BS Golf, presented to you by P45 Knuckle Down Golf. It's a Monday wrap-up. Scotty Scheffler wins the Players' Championship. I'll tell you what, it was exciting. I enjoyed it for sure. Uh, it was a little bewildering, the fact that TPC Sawgrass, by design, is supposed to be challenging uh, especially to the greatest players in the world, uh, seem awfully soft um, overall. Yet there was some rain early in the week, and so be it. But I don't know; it just didn't seem to have the real challenge that we typically come to find, especially on on Sunday down that back stretch with with the amazing setup and the way it can play out. Uh, Scotty somehow went above and beyond sixty four just. I mean, cruised in, and the rest of them, I wouldn't say struggled. I think it was just a matter of, I don't know, just not not executing the, the most crucial putts especially. Uh, that one putt on 18 with, you know, uh, a Wyndham was just bizarre. So, I, I don't know. Uh, crazy finish, exciting for sure. And, you know, the PJ Tour is getting what they want with Scotty being propped up even more and, some out there even bringing in the the notion of the next T-Dub. And I don't know about all that. It's a different scenario, I would say. Um, one The one big thing, and it's being debated all over the place like normal, I think it's hard to ignore the fact that this event was played out. The reasons don't have, don't have to matter, just the sheer facts. No DJ, no Bryson, no Brooks, no Cam Smith. Um, no John Rom. I understand the, the premise, you know, the fifth major. Um, you know, I've always been able to get on board with that for the most part. And yeah, I get it. You know, greatest field all year. You know, uh, you're going to find yourself in, in this kind of, Environment of discussion at some point or another, no matter what you do, if you're involved or you've tuned out of golf altogether, and that's just the way it is at this stage for a lot of folk. But it's just it wasn't the greatest field that it could have been. I think that's the bigger uh, issue here, and the reasons aside, you know, because everybody has the reasons, of course. But the truth of the matter is, this could have been a much bigger event with some, I mean, serious star power, you know going head to head down the stretch and we didn't have that um we had a decent finish you know the, the three uh, the three there especially gave us a good run so you know overall it's a good week and, and it was enjoyable but i just it's it's hard to ignore and put completely aside the fact that boy what it could have been so uh anyhow comments down below for sure and, uh, you know, like I said, I'll always get, get back to you if, if, if I have any questions or, or anything like that. Uh, moving on to a little golf uh, instructional content here. That's what I'm all about, of course. Uh, got all kinds of great things going on, but had an interesting discussion when I was at a facility here this weekend. You know, and there, there's, a, there's a purpose to club fitting, uh, but there's a lot of misuse of club fitting in the, in the golf industry. And the number one uh, part of it is that if you go and actually look at a, uh, a, a, the classic Ping Club Fitting 101 instructional guides, they were the ones that kind of stepped in when we started getting into this whole club fitting to help players thing and said, well, let's organize. Let's make sure that we're doing this right. Let's, you know, let's put some standards to it, if you will. Not that they exist any more better today than they did back then, but that being aside... They did try. And in the handbook, it fully, clearly says right out of the gates. When you're doing the player interview, one of the most important questions you got to find out, especially if you're not teaching them. Now, we'll get back to that part in a minute. If you're not teaching them, you got to find out, well, are you inconsistent? And how inconsistent are you? Because if you're a highly inconsistent consistent golfer with all kinds of different out, outcomes that happens when you go play and hit balls, there is no really good way to accurately club fit you. In reality, you're just taking flat out guesses. So how much is that club fitting really benefiting you? And 
are the clubs you're getting really benefiting you as much as you may believe they are? That's a tough one to, to really uh, boil down. We'll, we'll probably do a real long club fitting discussion recording at some point so we can get into the deeper aspects of it. But the big picture is this. If you're inconsistent, club fitting cannot be done properly. What they can do is they can sit up there, take a bunch of data, and show you one or two where you happen to hit the ball just a little bit better than the rest, and all of a sudden you get some numbers that make you say, ooh, look at that. But here's the thing. What I've always said, and I've always done this with my students, is, hey, look, this is a narrowing down process. There's no perfect any way necessarily to club fit anybody. I don't care who you are. Tour pros even go through sometimes months of testing. Well, that's what we do. We narrow down at first. We test some of the things we think might fit great. And then we go test them out a bunch more and a bunch more. And then we come back and we refit again. Kind of see and compare the numbers. Because I'll tell you this. The more inconsistent the player is, if you were to test them today, two months from now, two months from then, and another two months later, you're going to get four completely different sets of data and information, which means they would fit into four completely different sets of golf clubs. How does that make any sense at all? And if you've done this long enough, hi, 25 years, you're going to find out that people come back to all the time. So yeah, I was club for this. And then I look at it and I kind of talk with them about it. I'm like, I mean, I hate to tell you this, but that don't fit you. And then, what do you mean? They fit me. And I'm like, yeah, but who fit you? And how did they do it? And did they do follow-up sessions with you? Did they make sure? Did they really do extensive testing? Nine times out of ten, the answer is no. Shoot, ten times out of ten, really. Because club fitting has become a tool for sales. How do we sell more equipment? How, how do we make a quick buck? Nah, I want a full set for sure. Fit. Absolutely, but I want the player consistent enough to be fit to that golf club. Because without that happening, you're likely to become uh, more of a problem, especially down the road. You know, the one thing about selling equipment is I want repeat purchases, not one time. I want repeat students. I want repeat people coming back for more. And if you don't do it right the first time, and if you don't tell them the truth, especially, to me, that's a bunch of BS. I understand why we're doing it. It helps promote sales. I get it. I just don't believe in that. I want to make sure we're doing this correctly. So if I have a highly inconsistent golfer in front of me and they're saying, hey, you know, I want to buy a bunch of clothes. I'm like, well, here's the thing. What if the fitting ain't correct? And beyond that, what if the clubs don't really provide you that much benefit? What are you going to see? A half a stroke improvement, maybe, in your game? Is it really worth it? Why not take that money and invest some time in your game, in your skills, in your capabilities of producing some output? And then if that output changes and gets better, then let's measure it. Then let's test it. Then let's find the fit that really works best for you. And that's the big key to it. It's not discussed uh, near enough, in my opinion. And even when it is discussed, there's a lot of people that have been made to fit the current generation of fitting principles, if you will, the way to do it. I've spoken to tour reps, uh, to club company tour reps, you know, the guys coming from the big, the big companies. And they've been conditioned to fall into this because they're not there uh, for a long-term process. That doesn't benefit them in any way. They need to hit sales with people at demo days on the spot. And so I will watch highly inconsistent people taking lessons on a range, just swinging away, hoping they're doing what the person's telling them. Not good, folks. Uh, it's a really bad way to learn, unfortunately. And I've seen the same thing with the club fittings. Ball going all over the place, different times, you know, no consistency. And then, you know, throw a machine down and get out some data and say, hey, let me show you this here real quick here. That's your best fit. Well, the question I have for those people is, is it really the best fit? And how do you know? Best time you find out, folks. Hit me up anytime. Uh... 
please go to the channel, subscribe. That way you'll get the information when all these videos come out. Hit the like button. Share it with the masses out there. Let them know what's going on over here at No BS Golf. As always, my name is Ryan Carpenter, presented by P45 Knuckle Down Golf. We'll talk to you later, folks.